Okay, so next up we are going to talk about just the air conduction part of pure tone testing and how we do that. So, to review, the patient task is for the patient to let us know in some consistent way that they've heard something. Um, the transducer is going to be uh, speakers or the super oral circumoral headphones or the inserts. And for test frequencies, we're going to test 250, 500, 1000, 2000, 4000, and 8000, and then the interactives if needed. And we'll talk about um, when they're needed again at the end of this slideshow. So for pure tone testing, the audiologist is controlling the intensity level of the tone. So the audiologist is making the tone louder or softer. And typically, we're controlling that intensity in 5 dB increments. The goal of pure tone testing at each frequency for each ear is for the audiologist to find the threshold, the threshold between not being able to hear it and being able to hear it. And in audiology and audiometry, typically, we take threshold as the level, the intensity level at which the person can detect the sound at least two out of three times, or at least 67% of the time. And then we're going to chart these thresholds on the audiogram. There's really two different um, sort of commonly used uh, pure tone methods. One of them is the modified Houston-Westlake method, and the other is the ascending method or ASHA method. My experience has been you tend to see the modified Houston-Westlake used more commonly, but you see the ascending method as well. There are some circumstances where it might be a better idea to use the ascending method. So, for the modified Houston-Westlake method, this is sort of commonly known as down 10 up 5. The first test frequency is going to be 1,000 hertz, and you're going to start testing at 30 dB. You're going to go down 10 to 20 if you get a hit from the patient. You play the tone at 30 dB, and the patient says, yep, I heard it. You're going to drop the intensity down 10, so you're going to make it softer. If the patient doesn't hear it, you play it at 30, the patient doesn't hear it, you're going to go up 20, and you're going to play it at 50 dB instead. From, and you continue to go up until the person hears it. From the first time the person clicks the button, yes, I heard it, you're going to go down 10 and then up 5. Threshold is going to be counted as the lowest intensity level that the patient correctly responds, it, responds at least 2 out of 3 times ascending. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute. So you're going to test the frequencies in this order, 1,000 hertz, 2,000 hertz, 3,000 hertz if needed, and we'll talk about when it's needed, 4,000 hertz, 6,000 hertz if needed, 8,000 hertz, you're going to double check, so you're not going to test for threshold again at 1,000, you're just going to double check um, the threshold you already found, and then you're going to test at 500 and 250. So here's an example. Let's say you're testing via air conduction um, at 1,000 hertz in the left ear. You start at 30 dB. Patient response. You're going to drop down to 20 dB. Patient response. You're going to drop down 10 more to 10 dB. And at 10 dB, you don't get a response. Now, you're going to increase to 15 dB. No response. You're going to go back up to 20. No response this time at 20. You're going to keep going up to 25, and this time you get a response at 25. But you still don't have a single level at which you've gotten a response two out of three times on an ascending run. So you're going to drop down again to 20. Oh, no, that's not true. You should drop from 25 back down to 15, and then you should go up from 15 up to 20, and then up to 25 again. Sorry, that's my error. 
you should drop, you always, when you go down, you go down in increments of 10. So that should be a drop from 25 to 15, and then 15, 20, and then 25 dB, where you finally get a second response. And then 25 dB is your threshold at 1,000 hertz in the left ear, and that's what you would mark on the audiogram. Um, you'll note both of these times you are coming up from softer sounds to 25 dB, and that's what is meant by an ascending run. And I'll show you another example of this too. Uh, so let's say um, now, so you've tested 1,000, you move on to 2,000 hertz. You play a tone at 30 dB, no response. Remember, at the beginning, you're going to go up from 30, you're going to go up 20 until you get a response. So you play the tone at 50 dB, patient response, down 10 to 40, no response. Up 5 to 45, yes. And so from 45, you're going to drop down again to 35 dB. No response, no response at 40, back up to 45, you get a response, and you're done. And then you're going to mark 45 dB on the audiogram. So let's do another example. So you've done one, you've done two, you don't have to do three, and so you've decided to do 4,000 hertz. Uh, you play 30 dB, correct response. 20 dB, nothing. 25 dB, nothing. Back up to 30, and you get a response. Now, you're not done. You haven't gotten two out of three responses ascending, because the first time you did it, the very first one you presented, wasn't coming up. So, you're going to drop down 10 again. Back up 5. Back up 5, and now you are done, and can call 30 dB your threshold. So that's the modified Houston-Westlake method. The ASHA 2005, or ascending method, goes a little bit differently. Um, so with the ASHA method, you're again starting at 1,000 hertz, and you're going to do the testing at 1,000 hertz a little bit differently. You're going to start at 30 dB for someone you think has normal hearing. And again, you don't always know this beforehand. Uh, you're going to start at 50 dB for someone with hearing loss. Um, if they don't hear it, you're going to go up 10. If they do hear it, you're going to go down 10, up 5, the same way you would with modified Houston-Westlake, and your threshold criteria is going to be the same as well. So 2 out of 3 on an ascending run. So it doesn't start, it doesn't sound very different now, but at all the other frequencies, you're going to start below at a softer intensity than where you expect threshold is, and you're going to ascend in intensity until you get a response. And from there, you're going to do the down 10, up 5. So again, you're going to test in the same order, the same frequencies as modified Houston-Westlake. So here's an example. Now, this is your starting frequency. So you're going to start at 1,000. They heard it at 30 dB. You're going to go down, down 10, down 10. They didn't hear it at 10, didn't hear it at 15. Oh. Um, they heard it at 20, so you're going to drop down again to 10. They didn't hear it at 10, they didn't hear it at 15. They heard it at 20, 20 is your threshold. Now, when you move to 2,000 hertz, let's say you have reason to believe this person has a hearing loss. so you're going to start, you believe their threshold is going to be somewhere in the 40 to 50 range. You're going to start at 30, and you're going to ascend in 10 dB increments until you get a response. And then you're going to drop down, and you're going to do down 10 up 5, and you get a response at 45, you drop down 10 from there to 35, no response, no response. And then you get another response at 45, 45 dB becomes your threshold. Um, and you're going to chart it on the audiogram. Now, the trouble with the ascending method is it, it requires you to have some sort of idea of where the person's thresholds are. And that's not always true and it's not always possible. However, there are some cases where ascending can be helpful. 
Um, if you suspect that somebody is not being entirely honest about their hearing loss, that's an example of when you may want to use ascending. Um, sometimes with older people particularly, um, or people that have limited cognitive abilities, um, they perseverate. So they leave their hand up for a very long time after they hear something. Um, and so in that case, you want to minimize responses and it's easier to start below threshold and just come up. Finally, when are 3000 hertz and 6000 hertz needed? Um, if noise induced hearing loss is suspected and or if there's any chance the person might be needing or getting hearing aids or is already wearing hearing aids, 3000 hertz is a very important frequency for speech and it's almost always where you're going to see a noise notch. So if noise induced hearing loss is a possibility, you need to test 3000 hertz. 6,000 hertz is important if hearing aids are going to be used um, because the verif um, verification machines top out at 6,000 hertz instead of 8,000. And then anytime there's a 20 dB or greater difference in surrounding octaves, you're going to test the interoctaves. And I'll show you some examples of that in class. And as you go, you're going to mark each threshold on the audiogram. Um, either electronically by storing it or by hand. Um, and especially if you're doing it by hand, you need to be sure that you're using the right symbol, you're using the right color, and that you've actually put it in the right spot. Um, especially if you're trying to go quickly, it's easy to actually chart it in the wrong place on the grid.